Be bold. Be heard. Welcome to Unmute Your Mic with your host, Jessica Bell. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of Unmute Your Mic. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Unmute Your Mic. My name is Jessica Bell. I am your host from Kansas City, Missouri. And I want to say thank you. Thank you for everyone who is tuning into this episode. If this is your first time, thank you for joining the Unmute Your Mic family and community and podcast. If you are returning, thank you again for being a part of this amazing community. As always, before we get started, please make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. You can also go to our website, Unmute Your Mic org purchase merchandise and watch it watch previous episodes i'm so excited for our guest today her name is tamala and she is from nashville and i'm so excited whenever i get to meet new people have new conversations thank you so much for agreeing to be on my podcast and if you could just introduce yourself and let us know a little bit about you Yes, I am, first of all, very happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. I am Tamala Shaw. I live in Nashville, like you said, and I wanted to come on here to talk a little bit about codependency. It's one of my passions right now. Uh, I have a Facebook page about codependency as well as a website to give more, we want to give more information to the public about it. I realized I was codependent a little bit over a decade ago now. I went to therapy because, you know, I'm I'm a firm believer of therapy. And one thing she told me, she said, you need to look into codependency because you're very codependent. And at the time, I had no idea what codependency was. So I went to Barnes & Noble, bought, uh, what is it, Uh, Melody Beatty. She, She does a lot of codependency books. So I bought Codependent No More read about it. And, you know, sometimes you can step into something and it's like, oh my gosh, that's my world. You know, I was like, that's me. So I did a little bit more research and realized that my codependency came from my parents. They were alcoholics. Thank goodness they are recovering alcoholics now. But at a younger age, I had to take on a lot more responsibility That's not really normal for, you know, younger children. And as of my, as I got older, my, I had to take care of my siblings, take care of things around the house. So I became the helper or the fixer, which is what codependents are. They're fixers. And, you know, even just down to the word codependent, co is doing something with someone. Dependent is when somebody is relying on someone else to do something for them. So you're basically helping a person not really do things for themselves. And that's kind of what I was doing. So it ended up bleeding into friendships, you know, always looking for someone who needed something. I thought I was super loving, (laughs) you know, when in all actuality, I was enabling. I realized that even in relationships with my grandmother, you know, with my you know, my husband at the time, it was all codependent, but I just didn't realize it. I thought it was me um, being needed or that was my way of loving people when in all actuality, I was enabling. So I can get into a little bit more of it if you'd like me to, you want me to keep going or did you have any questions? Well, you brought up, yeah, you brought up some really amazing points that I just kind of wanted to go over. So first off, for people who are listening, who maybe have never heard this term before, you know, can you break down a little bit about exactly what it is? I know you gave, you know, like some examples, but really like, what does that term actually mean? And then if you could talk a little bit about how do we know the difference between just being a helper and being a lover and being, um, you know, creating that codependent relationship with somebody else? When you are enabling or being codependent, it doesn't feel good inside. You're doing things. You you won't give your nose, you know, or your nose 
don't feel good. I always say you should always give your best yes. So if your yes doesn't feel good, it shouldn't be a yes. It should be a no. So, you know, what what I used to do is you you see someone in a bind and you've told them, okay, I'm going to help you out this time, but next time, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this. But next time, when next time comes, you want to say no, but you feel bad. And then, so you do what you weren't going to do. You do it anyway, but then afterwards you feel bad. So that brings the toxicity back to you. So you find yourself in a toxic situation because you didn't give your best yes, or you put yourself in a position that you really weren't comfortable. So a lot of times when you're a fixer, another thing that you do is you manipulate things to work out the way you want them to. And I and, and you don't people look at codependence like, oh, you know, yeah, we, we do. We are in situations where we do things that we don't want to do, but we also manipulate situations to turn them to turn out the way that we want them to, because we are the fixers. The way that we want it to happen is the correct way. Right. So but that's why you have to have boundaries. You know, a lot of times we break our boundaries all the time. We have a hard time with confrontation. We don't like confrontation. We'll just say yes and just not deal with it. I know in a lot of relationships, I swept so many things under the rug. Oh, just never mind. I don't want to talk about it. Just, just do it. I don't want to talk about it. Um, you have to learn to detach from people because when people are toxic to you, you have to let go. So that's something that's a learned behavior. And the thing about codependency is it doesn't mean that everything um, everything is wrong, meaning you can have codependent characteristics. That's why I tell people you may not be codependent with everyone. You may be codependent with certain people. So it may be a husband. It might be your kids. It might be your parents. And so there's a very fine line in loving hard and being toxic, that relationship being toxic. A lot of people that are codependent, they find themselves, uh, their their mates or their parents or family members are addicts because those are the ones that need the help. Um, They either, like I have a hard time still, I have to keep myself in check when it comes to my children. Because my children are the ones that I feel as though, oh, I've got to help. You know, I've got to I've got to help them get out of certain situations. But I had to realize people grow when you allow them to go through things on their own. Right. And not always just fix the problem. So that's something I have. a I have a 30 year old and a 25 year old. So. It's it's like, okay, they're grown. Tamala, you got it. They don't you don't they don't need you for everything. And if they do need you, they'll tell you. Right. And then you can decide what's good for you, what feels good on the inside. But I love that. And I think that's so important. I love that you brought up, you know, having those boundaries and realizing if you are in a toxic relationship. And I so and I know one of the questions, at least I have. You know, what is what do you do when you find yourself in these toxic relationships, but there are people who kind of you can't just get rid of like like you, maybe your parents or your husband or your children. Where yes. You can't just say, you know, cut them off and be like, well, you're toxic. I got to go. How do you kind of create those boundaries in a relationship that maybe hasn't had those boundaries for 20 years? Yes. And that that's a big part. Um, I have. I have a podcast and in the podcast, I talk about boundaries because you've done something for so long, a certain way, and then you tweak what you're doing and everybody's like, whoa, oh, what's going on? So the first thing that a person might do is get angry. They might get upset. I call it the bear. That bear will growl because you've been feeding that bear for so long and now you want to starve it. You know, so the bear's like, hold on, you've been feeding me all this time. Why all of a sudden do you want to stop feeding me? So the thing is, it's not good for you. So you have to have conversations, being very transparent 
is always key. You have to talk through situations and not just cut a person off and not talk about it and tell them why. And if you if they love you and you tell them this doesn't make me feel good, this is toxic for me, then hopefully they will back off. But you always have to do what's best for you. One thing that I realized, um, you know how they have uh, AA for alcoholics and NA for narcotic, narcotic anonymous. Now they have, and I shouldn't say now, I say now for me because I didn't know. They have CODA, uh, they have CODA, which is Codependence Anonymous. So I ended up going through CODA and you can get a sponsor. You can go to meetings. You realize you're not alone. So you'll have people to talk to. So the first thing that I did, I went to a meeting. Now, I have to say the meetings that I went to, they weren't really for me because, you know, we don't really know about codependency in certain urban areas. So I was like, OK, this is not my type of meeting. It wasn't the same type of conversation. So I started holding my own meetings at libraries through CODA. And I mean, I had people come, they from come from the universities, come from the neighborhood. And so we had a, a unit and it was really, really good, really, really helpful. And of course, COVID hit, so we had to stop, but we have them on Zoom now. And you can go to coda, coda.org, www.coda.org, and you can find meetings. They have telephone meetings, they have Zoom meetings. Um, and some people still do them in person, just in smaller, uh, smaller capacities. But it's good to have a person, have a, a unit that are, you know, that are going through the same things. And it was funny because in the meetings, we would find out that we were all going through the same thing throughout the week, you know. So it, that support system helps when you're trying to, you know, make sure that your boundaries are standing on them. Make sure that if you have to detach from someone, that you have someone to talk to to keep you strong. You have a sponsor to call if you want a break, <laughs> you know. So, so those are the, those are the things that I suggest that you can do. Yeah, and also the fact that she said, you know, our sometimes I believe in the black community. We I've like never heard of this until I was grown and yes. was seeing like a counselor and hearing different things and and going to school and taking yep. psychology yep. classes and that kind of thing but in our community growing up i never heard of that mm -hmm. like hey maybe you no. have this or maybe you're, right. you know that was not even a thought you know right like, exactly and so i think that's why it was so important for me to have you talk about this topic because it's not one that a lot of people just say or throw out there um and I then agree. to know that they have meetings you know where you can sit down and talk to other people i think it's so strong that's so important and it keeps it us strong having people around us who can kind of understand what it is that we're struggling with and what, what we're going through and so a little bit about your story when you just when you found out that, you know, this is what your therapist or your counselor had told you. Um, and you started going to the meetings. What were some other changes you had to make in your life um, to kind of break this habit? Uh, <laughs> it's it's something that you have to do on a daily, because like you said, if if I had this behavior for 30 years and then all of a sudden I'm like, OK, well, maybe I wasn't. Um, as helpful as I thought I was being, but I had to go back to my childhood to see what started it. You know, um, I realized that it was a lot of things, even when it came to, uh, like when I was younger, my mom was a drinker. She wasn't like a drinker that, she wasn't the the alcoholic that the the alcoholic right she was a a person we would come home she would come get me and my brother from school uh we would go home she would cook she would do our homework she'd do everything that we needed to do then she'd go in the room and she'd go in her room and she'd drink and so me and my brother were kind of left alone at at that point so it was kind of it, it's something that I took on to make sure that we were okay before I went to bed, that the doors were locked to make sure that um, if she had cooked, that the eyes were off. Right. So those are things that I took upon myself to do. So I had to heal that little girl that was abandoned. Right. I had to have these conversations with my mom, which wasn't always easy. Right. And 
Luckily, she was going, I shouldn't say luckily, but she was going through recovery at the time. That's where I was blessed because a lot of people that are going through situations in codependency when they go to their parents to say, this is what I felt happened in my childhood. This is how I felt when it happened. The parents are not always willing to listen. Sometimes they'll say, no, it didn't happen that way. I don't remember it that way and shut them off. Luckily, I had my mom. She was like, ah, oh, she's she'll, she'll tell me it's hard to hear. But that's your truth. So I'm going to listen. So I was very, very blessed. So it made my reparenting easier to do. Now, was a lot of things that I had to face about myself, you know, being the manipulator. OK, so I had to look at myself. I was I'm big on uh, looking at myself and telling myself about myself. <laughs> so <laughs> I was you're a manipulator. You know, you 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 sit back and you try to fix people and it's not your job. You know, you are wonderful, though. You are beautiful, you know, because self-esteem can get low sometimes. Right. You are beautiful. You are worthy. You are worthy of people who can allow you to stand on your own and they stand on their own. You know, so it's a lot of work that has to be done, right? So you just have to ident- identify those areas that need to be worked on. I journal. I'm big on affirmation cards. Um, I am a life coach, and now it's uh, codependent recovery. Now that's that's my that's my focus. Um, God gave me a book that I needed to write with me and my mom. So me and my mom we, co- we co-wrote a book called uh, God Turned Mommy's Wine Into Water because he turned her wine into water. And in that, we were able to talk. And it's a book to tell about her alcoholism because that's what led to my codependency. So that was big. You talking about recovery? That was recovery. (laughs) And that's beautiful to be able to have those kind of open conversations with your mom and for it to be used to kind of heal both of you in that sense, but also to be put out into the world where other people can now read this and be healed from it because everyone won't be able to have those kind of conversations with whether your whether the parents is just not, you know, they won't respond to it or they deny Mm -hmm. it or Unfortunately, if your parents have passed away and you never got to have that conversation. Very so true. I think that is so beautiful that you were able to do that. And then you also mentioned that you are a life coach. So how did you get started in that? That started because even okay, so within the whole codependency thing, what you do is listen. You listen to people all the time and you fix people all the time. <laughs> so in that, I just had to learn to allow people to guide themselves. So the talent and the gift was always in me. I was just using it incorrectly. You should allow people to get there on their own rather than trying to push them there, (laughs) you know? So I love that. The talent was already in you. Uh, That's so beautiful because I feel like so many of us have giftings and callings inside of us, and we just don't quite know how to use them. And so we try in our ability, you know, to use them. And it doesn't always, sometimes it's not even intentionally that we're using them incorrectly. We're just misinformed. And so I think that that's really um, an important, you know, factor for people to think about too, who are listening, is that it, these qualities that you have, the ability to be able to help people, that's not bad within itself, Exactly. but it's how that, how you do it. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to ask that question. I'm, I'm really asking this for me because I'm like, hmm, <laughs> some things are really starting to make sense. But when you have, you know, people in your life that you do want to help now, being in the space that you are at, How do you help them, you know, so you can still stay true to the giftings you have without slipping back into where you were? The first thing I do is wait for them to ask, (laughs) because before I didn't, I just saw and did. Right. So if they ask, then that means that they're willing to do the work. So if they're willing to do the work, then, you know, that's when you go in and say, okay. Let's talk about it. And then, you know, you can give different um, scenarios. Um, Again, I'm really, really big on journaling because if you just sit back and write things down, you can solve so many things on your own. You can come to so many different realizations that you don't even think about. You know, 
I was talking to my mom the other day and we were we were just chatting about something and I was just like, oh, all this time that was right here and just getting it out. You just come to so you can answer so many questions on your own, especially if you, you meditate. I meditate. <laughs> so I'm big on having other people meditate as well. Um, I've, I've started having people that come to me on Wednesday nights. I just do 30 minutes of meditation on Zoom. Anybody that wants to come in, they can come in. I don't, you know, it's silent. Nobody, you know, nobody can talk. Nobody's, hey, girl, you know, all that. You, you come in, you meditate. And then at the end, we log off. I have so many people that come to me to say just that 30 minutes a week. It opens up so many things in my mind. It allows me to open up and get answers. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, much bigger than I ever thought it would, it would turn out, you know, but I've had so many people contact me going that 30 minutes really makes a difference. Or they enjoyed that 30 minutes so much. They're like, girl, I made it an hour or girl, I ended up doing it the next day, you know? So it's getting people into themselves and it's just healing. And it's just beautiful because people are, it's right here. It really is. You just got to know how to pull it out, you know? And most of us are so busy. Like we just live busy lives. People are parents and, you know, we've got jobs and anything else that we're doing, entrepreneurs, podcasts, all of these things that we all we hear is noise on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a teacher, so it is my life is loud. 24 7 it is just noise and so yes. i can imagine that 30 minutes of just me just reflecting praying meditating thinking about nothing or whatever it is that i need to be thinking about you know would be so beneficial like you said to the healing process um really and i want you to talk a little bit about your podcast you mentioned you had a podcast so can you yes. tell us a little bit about that Absolutely. Okay. So once I realized that people in my community didn't really know much about codependency, I started a company called Codependent Me. Oh, I've got the shirt on. Codependent Me. <laughs> and I started it because it's to let people know that codependency starts with me. Healing my codependency starts with me. I'm number one. So I started, I got the, I have the website. It's www.codependentme.org and it'll tell you different characteristics. It'll tell you different things that you can do in order to look into. It refers different books. Um, we've got a Facebook page, which is wonderful. We support each other on the Facebook page. Um, and so I started a podcast because so many people would ask me questions from the Facebook group. How do you do this? How do you do the boundaries, detachment? So I started making them into episodes. So then I was blessed enough that my mom came on as a guest to talk about her alcoholism and the recovery of it. And then my dad came from Vegas. He's on there talking about his recovery. And I've had guests talk about narcissism. Um, hypnotherapist. Um, I'm trying to think. My last go. My last guest. Uh, she was a conscience, a relationship. How does she say it? A conscious relationship coach. So you don't think about how you don't. You go into things, but are you really being conscious of what you're doing? So she made. She had me look at things totally different. I was like, "This is good," and I, I'm sure you feel that same way about your podcast. You learn so much. It's so good. So, oh, and then of course my book. God, oh, there we go. God turned mommy's wine into water. So I'm trying to spread the word on the recovery of codependency and codependency. Period. Because, like you said, we don't really know about it like we should. So I just want to do my part in spreading the word. And you're doing an amazing job at that. You have so much going on. And I think all of it is going to be so beneficial because once we can identify these things, it doesn't mean that we're broken or we can't mm -mm. fix them or, you know, that we're just 
th- like throwaways. Like everything can be healed and fixed. Yes. And I love that. And I love that your parents are involved in it now because that's such a full circle type of story. Absolutely. I'm um, so blessed. Yes, it is. Ext- it's extremely a blessing. And because everyone won't have that ability, you're allowing us to kind of tap into your life and gain off of your healing and off of the things that you are learning. So I just want to thank you for what it is that you are doing because you're really bringing something to the community. And I love when people kind of specialize in certain topics because I think we have, when we're passionate about certain things and that's what we're called to do, it's, I mean, we really put our all into it because of that. You know, and I think Absolutely. that's so awesome. And I've I've so enjoyed this conversation. Thank but before you. we leave, I would love for you to just give a minute or two of encouragement to somebody who's listening. So um, maybe they're they're listening like me, and they're like, "Hmm, I want to I want to learn a little bit more about that." Or they're you know they're healing, but they're sometimes mm-hmm. they feel stagnant or discouraged. Because you just encourage them for just a minute or two. Absolutely. The first thing I, I really want to tell people because people think about codependency and they think, oh, they're abused. And, you know, and there is a they think about it being sad. Right. And that hurts. That hurts my heart because, number one, you're strong to be able to deal with the things that you've dealt with. Right. And once you identify with it, you can use that strength to to your journey toward healing. And I, it's a lot of things that people go through and they're ashamed. There's a lot of things that I speak on about my life. And a lot of people say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you speak on that. Well, you know what? I wouldn't be the person that I am today if I did not go to think, go through the things that I went through. That strength is what radiates, right? It's what, what brings people to you. Broken, you know, just like they say, uh, hurt people, hurt people. Well, heal people, heal people, right? So just keep your head up. Know that you can get through it. You have to find people, find like people that are healing. They'll help. They will help get you through. And more more so than any anything, just tell your story. One thing that I say at the end of my podcast is your story matters. Tell it. Somebody is hearing it. And another thing that I've been told, and I do believe that things that you go through, you're not going through it for you. You're going through it for the people behind you. And if you lift yourself up and get it together, you'll be able to turn around and tell it, you know? So that's what I'm doing. I'm turning around and I'm telling my story just to let people know they can make it. You got this girl. You got this. You got this. uh, I don't, I don't want to say son, but you got this handsome kings and queens. <laughs> they got it. It's it's all a matter of coming together and healing. And it's okay. If I fall short today, guess what? Preferably God will wake me up tomorrow and I can pick myself back up. We all fall short. But if you get back up, it's going to be okay. Well, I don't have to say anything else after that. I don't have to close it. So, good night. No. <laughs> but thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode. Tamala, you are truly amazing. And I'm so excited to see what else you are going to be doing. I mean, you are here doing so many things. Um, and I'm also going to put all of your information down below. So, everybody who is listening, if you are watching us live on Facebook or YouTube, all of her information will be down below. Please connect with her go to her website, purchase her book, join her meditation group. She's doing everything. So you can plug in anywhere. Um, And if you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can go to unmuteyourmic.org and go to our show notes and you can find everything that she was talking about in this episode in our show notes. notes. I want to thank everybody again for listening to another episode of Unmute Your Mic. Tamala, I want to thank you. It has been a joy talking to you. It really has. Thank you so much. Um, And everybody, don't forget to be bold, be heard, and unmute your mic. Continue to tell your stories. Like Tamala says, your story matters. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you for tuning in to Unmute Your Mic. Be sure to tune in next time when Jessica takes her mic off mute as she continues her journey to find stories that inspire 
and uplift our communities.